Coming up on Down Under EV Adventures, we do a bottom cell balance on the Atto 3. It's all about battery health today and what you can do to keep your Atto 3 battery in great condition. Welcome back to the channel everyone, thanks for joining me. We're going to look at battery health today, in particular the LFP battery chemistry of an Atto 3, which is what car I have at the moment. Now, if you're not already aware, there are different types of battery chemistries that go into EVs. There's two main different ones that you should probably know about. So there's the NMC batteries, which stands for Nickel Manganese Cobalt. And they're common in cars like Teslas, for example, some long range models of Teslas and also the Škoda Enyaq, just to name a couple. And then of course you've got the LFP batteries, which stands for Lithium Iron Phosphate. And those sorts of batteries are quite common in the BYDs. For example, in the C-Line, which I test drove a couple of weeks ago, and of course in the Atto 3, which is what a lot of people own who follow this channel. Now, the, this episode is not going to go too much into detail regarding the differences in battery technology and battery chemistry but there's probably a few things you should know for example there is a little bit of a voltage difference which is bigger in an NMC battery now this will affect the charging curve so depending on what sort of battery you have when you charge it the charging curve will be different now you probably don't need to be concerned with too much if you've got an LFP battery in terms of whether you should keep the battery fully charged or not. So if you do own an Atto or a car that does have an LFP battery, well the good news is there's no worries if the battery is kept fully charged. So what's the deal with balancing your cells in the car? Well, very briefly, it's more of an issue with bottom cell balancing. It's generally not an issue with top cell balancing because most people who have an Atto know that they can charge the car to 100% and they do this often. However, the bottom cell balancing should be done because it can be problematic when the car's battery percentage gets quite low, so typically below 10% can be an issue. Now that's the reason for this is because the cells have all have slightly different voltages as they charge and discharge over time and that can lead to some larger discrepancies in the cells. Now, the problem you may run into is even though the, the, the car's battery percentage is getting low, some of the cells could have plenty of charge in them. But because um, other cells don't, they have um, little or very no charge in them, the car thinks that the battery is low and it will read that the, the, the charge is low, the, the percentage of battery will show low on the dashboard. And then of course the car panics and thinks oh no there's not enough battery to keep the car running and then you can run into some issues now some of those issues can include things like they're usually just minor issues but <laughs> they can turn into major issues so firstly the car could go into like a limp mode where it limits power and then you know as it gets even lower it could actually just you know decide to stop the car now all this is done of course to protect the car and to protect the battery. Now worst case scenario you could do some long, long term damage to the batteries. However the chances of this happening are pretty minuscule. Basically what you want to do is you want to avoid any issues on the off chance that you do get that, that battery going down below say 10% and particularly below the critical sort of 5% level. Now you're unlikely to do any harm to the car if you do this. It's more that you want to be able to eke out a more accurate range for your car and you want to be able to go a few more kilometers. So you don't want it happening if you, if you don't balance the car um, cells at all. There's po a possibility that once you get below 10% suddenly even though the car probably could do another 40 kilometers suddenly just decide to stop and that could be very inconvenient for you. So it's good practice to do this and 
there's a lot of um, evidence to show that you can extend the the life of the battery and the range of the battery if you do this regularly which is why you do it so anyway it's time to now join me in real time the other day when I was driving and I hadn't charged my battery for a little while I noticed it was getting low so I thought wow this is a good opportunity to do it because I realized I hadn't done it for a while let's have a look so you can see I've got 11% there haven't done the balance for quite a while. I'm on my way home after this last job here. So I've only got a few kilometers to get home and then it will be under 10%. So that's what you want to do. You want to get the car under 10% and then you'll be able to, to calibrate the batteries. So I'm just trying to remember when the last one I did, I think it may have been about four months ago that I did the, the bottom cell balance. So ideally you want to do this at least twice, perhaps three times a year. You could probably do it a little bit more if you wanted to, but definitely you want to do it, yeah, around about that three or four month mark, perhaps five months. And then that way the battery shouldn't get too much out of calibration. Could be that it's reading the wrong um, balance of your battery and you don't really want that because you don't want the, the drop off to happen. In other words, when you get below 10% or if you get below 10%, you don't want that percentage to drop quickly because you could well have enough charge in your batteries, but the reading is showing that it's less and the car thinks that it's got less charge in the batteries and then you know then the car can actually do all sorts of things if you do that you'll um, have good health in your battery so it's just another thing that you should do to keep your batteries nice and healthy so that's the warning which comes up when you need to recharge now i've come home and i'm down to about eight percent that's not the lowest i've been i've been down to six before but hey because i haven't done this for a while i'm happy to plug in now all right, time for some nice, juicy, free electrons. Helps if I take the cap off. All right, so ideally what you want to do now is leave it until it's full. So let's have a look what it says here on the binnacle. So 8% we at, and it looks like about 9 hours or so, which should be okay because I'm not going out again today. So I can just leave that now to charge we will have done our work and as you can see it's another very sunny day here in Kalgoorlie quite warm today I think we're going for about 32 so it's a great day to be charging and that's it now we just leave it to do its thing and it's all free because it's it's um, solar power so which is great and now we'll come back later on and have a look when it's full Okay, so I've just unplugged and the sun is setting. So I reckon I pretty much had free charging the whole day. There might have just been a little bit at the end there. And that is how to do a balance on your car. So the bottom cell and also a top cell as well. Just leave your car to charge if you can. If you, if you can't, like I said, it's no big deal. As long as you do the bottom one, that is what counts and that will get your battery all calibrated and nice and healthy again. And just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a battery expert, so I may have made a few minor errors and I encourage you to go out there and do your own research as well to learn a bit about it. The important thing is that you do it. That is the important thing. So BYD will tell you themselves to calibrate the battery and that will ensure the longevity. Now there's an excellent article on Wikipedia about um, battery balancing with some good references in there. So if you're a little bit of a battery nerd, you can have a delve into that, read up a little bit more about it. But for most people, you don't really need to know too much, just that you should do it in accordance with the BYD guidelines and that will then ensure that you have good battery health. And even though I'm not planning on keeping this car, I'm, you know, buying another car later on this year, I certainly want to keep the batteries in good condition and I hope that my car has a long life long after I've sold it and will last many years. And in fact, I even hope that one day the batteries are repurposed on it and perhaps used as a battery backup for a house. I predict that in the next five to ten years, someone's going to get very wealthy in Australia 
repurposing batteries for that purpose. So there you have it, that's what you should do if you've got a car with an LFP battery. And I better go and make sure I do my wife's car now, I don't think she's done one on her car for quite a while. So we're probably going to do that next. Alright, that's it. Thank you very much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Take care as always out there. And we'll see you very, very soon with more on Down Under EV Adventures. We've got some great episodes coming up. So stay tuned for some more car reviews. I'll leave you with Zoe. Bye for now.